What is up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dap Central. My name is Fareed. And in today's video, I want to jump into the official results for projects that have been funded, as well as those that did not make the cut as a part of Project Catalyst funding round number 10. So we're not going to take any more time. We're going to jump right on in. If you guys are not familiar with Project Catalyst, this is going to give the builders on the network the ability to propose their proposals to the general Cardano community. And as long as you hold more than 500 ADA, you're able to vote for proposals that you think will move Cardano in the right direction. As a part of the 10th funding round, we saw a total budget of 50 million ADA going out to the top proposals in the community. Now, there were a total of 13 different challenges, more than 400,000 votes cast, with over 1,400 different proposals being put out for review. If I'm not mistaken, funding round number nine, which took place about a year ago, so there was a pretty big gap between funding round number nine and funding round number 10, but hopefully there's a bigger and a faster cadence with the upcoming and future project catalyst funding rounds. Now in funding round number nine, there were over 1000 proposals as opposed to the 1400, almost 1500 proposals that we've seen within the funding round number 10. So arguably the biggest as well as the most competitive funding round that we've seen to date on Cardano. Now doing a little bit of number crunching, if we take a look at the 192 proposals approved out of the total 1467 that gives us an approval rate of 13 percent of the total proposals put out there so a very tight race a very hard competition but i want to say a big congratulations to everybody and every team that was able to get funded as a part of project catalyst funding round number 10. quickly jumping into the funding round 10 timeline on may 24th we got the official announcement of this particular fund we then saw it kick off on june 21st followed by the finalization deadline on july 17th and then we had a one-month community review between july 20th and august 20th following that we had a voting period between august 31st and september 14th so about two weeks followed by the release of the voting results which was actually done today on september 21st in terms of onboarding and i believe the first reward distribution for the um, funded projects we should see that going out in the month of october now, one thing to keep in mind with this particular funding round is going to be the milestone approach. So what we've seen in times past is that teams are able to win or get funded, but there really wasn't a clear way to make sure that the funds are being spent properly and that progress was being made on the actual approved proposals. So as a part of this new funding round, there will be a milestone approach, which basically allows for the... Um, IOG and Cardano Foundation to send out the funds in increments, right? So you'll have milestones that you have already dedicated or committed to as a part of the proposal, which that was one of the questions. And as you commit and actually execute those particular milestones, IOG and the Cardano Foundation will review those particular milestones and make sure that as long as they are met, that you're then able to receive additional payments to continue developing on said proposal. So again, this particular um, process with Project Catalyst will continue to evolve, especially as we get additional funding rounds. So the next thing I want to do is jump into the official results, which was released in a PDF format by the Input Output Global team. I'll leave the link to this down below as always. And of course, for the sake of time, I'm not going to be able to jump into every single proposal, but I do want to quickly touch on some of the bigger projects that have um, officially been awarded with funding round proposals or funding round approval. So this basically talks about the status of the different proposals, which ones are voted yes and which ones are voted no. And then there's 13 different categories, which I mentioned before, with the biggest one being the development and infrastructure. So we have Pima, which is going to be building a on-chain gaming infrastructure, which has been funded. We've also got the M Labs congested testnet approval or proposal, which has been approved. We've got an additional M Labs proposal, which is going to be surrounding rethinking SIP number 30. We've got Cardano Scan Maintenance, which if you guys are not familiar, they're going to be one of the biggest um, chain explorers that we have to date on Cardano. 
Now, granted that we have seen a few others pop up like C Explorer, as well as the Chain Explorer developed by the Cardano Foundation, which has recently gone into beta. We've got another MLAPS proposal. And then we also have the Sunday Swap team getting their Hydra Transaction Stream plugin also approved. We've got decentralized minting from the ADA Handle team. And we've also got Block Frost with an SDK refresh. And then let's see who else we have here. We have Eternal getting funded. And then we've got the Spectrum Network, which is building a fully decentralized DEX, also getting their cross-chain messaging protocol approved. I will be having the Spectrum team on the channel very soon for a fully dedicated interview. So if you guys have any questions surrounding what they're building or providing, then make sure you leave them down below as a part of today's video. Scrolling down, we've got the Sunday Lab team with a Hydra Ledger and the... Cardano Shield proposal, which I believe is aiming to protect wallet users as a part of the Jira wallet getting approved as well. So that's going to wrap it up there for the biggest category. Jumping into startups and onboarding, we've got Catalyst School. We've got the Oxford University Student Hub. We've got additional education opportunities getting approved. We've got the Cardano for STEM Brazilian students, Unified Cardano Student Club in Nigeria and the Cardano Student Blockchain Ambassador Program. Scrolling down into products and integrations, we've got an additional proposal by the Eternal team. We've got Sunday Swap with their Icon Smart Contracts, which will be using Icon. We've got MinSwap getting their Icon V2 audit approved with their additional Stable Swap Audit plus Bug Bounty. And let's see here, a few other audits, again, Sunday Swap. And then we've got LenFi getting their Icon V2 as well as their bug bounty proposal approved. We've got Cerberus, which is a pretty big one here, right? They're going to be providing us with forensics and just investigative data on Cardano. If you guys missed their latest proposal or their latest, excuse me, um, review or investigation into Cardano, I recommend you guys go ahead and check that out. I did release a full dedicated video touching on that as well. Another big one to note is going to be USDM, which is going to be a fiat back staple coin being brought onto Cardano by the Mahen team. And I believe they're aiming to be launching their platform with, I think, three or four states within the United States, allowing for them to mint their fiat back stable coin in Q4 of this year. So hopefully within the next couple of months, we have an additional staple coin on top of JET and IUSD on the network for us to use. We've got, let's see, the ADA Handle Marketplace, which has also been approved. We've got Cardano Tax and Accounting Tool. So that should be an interesting one there, right? I'm sure that a lot of people within the space are trying to do their taxes the right way. And we've already seen platforms like MinSwap provide us with the ability to export our trading history, et cetera. But that's only one single dApp. So you can imagine that if you're providing, you know, assets and providing transactions or creating transactions across multiple DeFi applications that you may want a way to easily get an idea as to what is reportable or what needs to be reported to the IRS or whatever tax agency that resides in your local area, their proper information. So I'm excited to see a particular proposal like that get funded and of course we'll be keeping up with them as they continue to develop as i promised earlier i'm not going to be able to touch on every single team that was approved again shout out to nmaker the clarity dow and so many other platforms that did get funding as a part of project catalyst funding round number 10. now i want to jump into some additional thoughts here that have been spread throughout the community with respect to the latest funding round obviously there was a lot of competition but there were some pretty big names that did not get funding. That includes the Ape Society, which they had a pretty big proposal out for a brand new wallet on Cardano. And that one did not go through. And as you can imagine, the team was a little bit disappointed, but they're now more than ever driven to committing and executing on their Levy platform and some of their other core offerings. Now, this brings into question you know, the entire voting process, obviously the Ape Society specifically is a pretty well-known project and they're one of the teams that are somewhat hate them or love them. And so I provide them with a lot of coverage on the channel and I'm definitely supportive of anybody building and bringing more eyeballs to Cardano. So I'm definitely behind what they're building, but there appears to have been a pretty big um, group of people that were downvoting their proposal. Now this brings into question some of the wallets and how voting should be done with Project Catalyst. I've touched on this in some of my live streams, you know, talking about how 
right now everything is one ADA per vote. And so obviously as some of the bigger wallets enter Catalyst, they have the ability to sway some of their proposals. Not only that, as a part of Catalyst right now and just how it works right now, you're able to downvote multiple proposals. So for example, if you hold a lot of ADA, right, and you're a whale and you have your own proposal, not only can you upvote your own proposal, but you can also downvote multiple competitors' proposals. And so what this has now sparked has just been a pretty big debate, which I think is beneficial to the space, right? Because we're trying to improve as we get more and more funding rounds surrounding how we can better make or how we can make the voting a lot more fair. And so one thing that has come up was just surrounding the ability to downvote, but only a certain amount of ADA's worth. So for example, if I hold a wallet with 1 million ADA, I'm able to upvote as many proposals as I want because that is a positive piece of feedback. But when it comes to downvoting, only being able to downvote with a certain amount of ADA for proposals across the board. So if I were to, for example, downvote one particular proposal for 500,000 ADA, that would then leave me an additional 500,000 ADA to downvote another proposal. And what this basically does is it reduces the amount of friction and the amount of gamification that could happen with bigger wallets just going around and just downvoting every single proposal. So I'm, inter I'm interested in hearing, you know, what do you think about this process? And are you on board with the one ADA per vote um, process as it stands right now? You know, there could be additional features. Maybe we do some sort of quadratic voting. Maybe we do some sort of weight or gate where if you hold over a certain amount of ADA, your votes begin to then have less and less of an effect that way we're not seeing one or two wallets holding, you know, 50 or 60 million plus ADA being able to basically define whether a particular proposal makes it through or not. Again, I want to hear your thoughts surrounding that. Another project that unfortunately did not get any funding at all was the Genius Yield Protocol. They had three different proposals out. I believe one was surrounding options trading on Cardano. The second was surrounding their Plutus application backend or PAB, which is an open source tooling platform. And then they had a third, I believe, which I can't think of the name right now, but um, they did have three of them overall. None of them were funded and they've obviously been building and contributing to the space, which really goes to show how competitive this latest round was. Now, another team that did not get funded as well was Iagon. They had their fluxion and stature proposals going out. And again, they've been contributing and getting a lot of traction. But that just really goes to show how stiff of a competition this particular funding round was. Now, what I'm also wondering is, will some of the projects that have already been funded also apply for additional funding as a part of Catalyst funding round number 11. Obviously, if they don't, that leaves a lot of room for some of the people that did not get funding in funding round number 10, the opportunity to potentially get funding in future rounds such as 11, 12, and so on. So those are just a few there. One that really stuck out to me as well was Icon. And there was a really good post that I saw earlier was that a lot of projects utilizing Icon right now got funded, which include, for example, Sunday Swap, MinSwap, LenFi, etc. But Icon themselves did not get their proposal passed. So that right there, I think for me, really opened my eyes to Project Catalyst and some of the areas that we could definitely improve in. If everybody is switching over to Icon and their job is to simplify the development on Cardano, we should all be for their particular proposal, especially if other people that are moving their proposal to use Icon are getting approved as well, right? It almost doesn't make sense to me that all these other platforms are getting funded to get their audits done by Icon or using Icon, but Icon themselves were not able to get their project through. So unfortunate news to the Icon team, but I hope that, you know, this only motivates them to continue developing. And again, hopefully that in future rounds, it can get the much needed funding that they definitely need. Now, last but not least, I believe that the Tap Tools project also did not get any funding, which obviously Tap Tools is one of the biggest um, analytics platforms right now on Cardano. So hopefully we begin to see, you know, them also try again in additional funding rounds and hopefully get approved as a part of those rounds. So We've touched on some of the winners, some of the losers, and some of the potential improvements that we can make to Project Catalyst. Let me know what you think down below, but I wanted to get this video out here as it's been a pretty big topic surrounding this in the last couple of hours. As always, if you guys found this particular video to be helpful or insightful in any way, shape or form, I would appreciate you if you could tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by the channel and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions for me, surrounding any of the projects that we've touched on as a part of today's video or just surrounding Cardano in general, then make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.